We've all been there. You have a relaxing and rejuvenating vacation or even a staycation. And as your time off comes to a close, you start experiencing anxiety and dread about returning to work. You want to hold on to this feeling of joy and being nourished by rest, but you worry that you will just be thrown back into the stress and pressure of your job as you return. Is it possible to hold on to this vacation feeling once you return to work? And how can you navigate the transition back to work smoothly? We'll be covering all of that and more in today's episode of Calmly Coping. Welcome to Calmly Coping. My name is Tati Garcia, and I'm a licensed therapist and coach who specializes in helping high achievers stop putting themselves last. If this topic interests you, then please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I release a new episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this episode is very timely for me and I was actually inspired to create this episode because I recently returned from vacation. So I traveled to Oregon, which for me is across the country because I'm located in New Jersey and I had a great vacation. It's so beautiful out there. I love nature. So I really enjoyed seeing the landscape out there, hiking and just enjoying nature and being present. And so because it was such a lovely vacation, once I returned home, I noticed some of those small feelings of kind of the anxiety and the anticipation of, okay, now I'm returning to work and this worry that I'm going to be flooded with all of these emails and things that I have to do and kind of thrust back into work mode when I had such a great time. And so if this is something that you can relate to, if this something is something that you're experiencing, or maybe you travel often for work, or maybe you just enjoy traveling, or you just utilize the time off that you have and you find it difficult to transition back into work mode, or maybe you're somebody who is, or maybe you have a schedule like you're a teacher or professor and you have vacations followed by then a busy return to work. These tips can be applicable regardless of the situation, but let's dive into it. So first I want to talk about the importance of preparing before you leave on vacation. And so this can help you to actually enjoy your vacation so that you actually do have that disconnection because that is so valuable to help your mind and your body to reset and to give you that time away from work, to give you some perspective of what it's like to not constantly be connected to work. And so some tangible ways that you can do this are by setting an autoresponder on your email, having coverage while you're away. So having, whether it is an assistant or a coworker or somebody that can help to cover your work, if that is necessary while you are away, doing things like setting a voicemail responder. So whenever I go away, I will check change my voicemail to say, you know, I will be away from the office until this date and you can expect me to respond upon my return. I will also change my autoresponder to say, this is when I will be returning and provide some options for either reaching out to me directly via a voice messaging app that I use so that if this is something that is time sensitive, people can still reach me. However, I also provide alternatives in the meantime for, let's say, with my Be Calm with Tati email, I will provide, let's say, you know, go take the high functioning anxiety quiz or any other resources that I have so that people can check those out while I'm away. So it's basically just providing and giving yourself some peace of mind so that people can know this is when you can expect to hear from me. And in the meantime, these are some things that you can do, or these are some alternative resources for my private practice email address. I will provide an emergency contact and say, contact 911, go to your local emergency room or contact any sort of mental health hotline, such as the suicide prevention hotline, if you feel that you are at risk or in any harm. And so that is something that is a resource so that people can access that if they need to. It's important to have some sort of alternative depending upon your job. You know, not every job is necessarily going to be 24 seven or high risk, but you know, within the confines of what your expectations are, speaking with your supervisor or if you are self-employed, assessing, okay, is there somebody that can cover this for me or is there a way that I can make sure that things are still running while I'm away so that's not something that you have to be worrying about or thinking about and so that you are free to disconnect and take that time for yourself because you deserve to do that. You deserve to disconnect and not feel as though you need to be checking email while you are away on vacation. So that is just important for you mentally as well. 
And so once you have done that, then you will also have a plan when you return. So because people have the expectation, okay, I will be returning on this date, then you can set up what I call catch up time. And so this will be for me, maybe like a few hours, maybe an entire morning, depending on your workload, it could be up to an entire day where you are just spending time catching up on the things that occurred while you were out. This could include maybe a meeting with your team or coworkers or whomever in order to catch up on, okay, what did I miss while I was away? Is there anything important that I need to know? As well as catching up on emails, voice messages, missed calls, anything like that. And so this will allow you the time to feel as though you have caught up and you're not just diving straight back into work. And so this will be something that I block out on my calendar and I ensure that I'm taking this time to catch up and I'm not scheduling other things during that time. Another thing that I think can be helpful is setting buffer time. And this is especially important if you are traveling between time zones because it takes time for our bodies to recover from transitioning from one time zone to the next. So our bodies did not evolve to travel, you know, from let's say Eastern time to Australian time in one day. And so therefore it's a stress on your body and that can affect your ability to manage stress, it's going to obviously affect your quality of sleep, which then kind of cascades and influences everything else. It influences your ability to manage anxiety, to handle your emotions, to focus and think clearly, to be able to be physically energized and, and all of those things that are important just to function in day to day, whether that is maybe identifying one buffer day or more in order to give your body that time to transition back. You know, this is especially if you are traveling a long distance, especially if you are flying between time zones and any other trip that is potentially going to be a stress on your mind and body. Because even positive things like going on vacation, if it's a change and a transition from your typical routine, it can be stress upon your body. That's not a bad thing or a negative thing. It's just a shift and it's something that you have to adjust to. And so I like to schedule you know, at least one day for a buffer after traveling to give myself time to recover. And honestly, it takes more than one day. And from this recent trip, it's taken more than one day. But once you get back, what can help if you don't have more than one day or if you haven't planned for that is just to be kind and understanding with yourself and recognize that this is going to be a transition. You're not going to be able to jump directly back into things the way that you were before necessarily, depending upon what kind of vacation you have had, if it has been a very active vacation versus a very relaxing vacation, that can make a difference. Transitioning back into things slowly can help to make that ease more easy, I guess, to, to help to to help you to ease back into things. And so that can include the buffer time, that can include the catch-up time, and that can also include, if possible, trying to either lighten your schedule or not overload your schedule, especially if you're the kind of person who tends to do that, try to be more conscious of that. And vacation can also provide you with some perspective to help you to reflect upon how you feel when you're not in work mode versus when you are. And if you notice, maybe there's some benefits from that relaxation time, from that time away, that can give you some insight to maybe help you to influence the way things are in your day to day. If you're the kind of person who's like white knuckling it through and constantly busy and in the state of stress and anxiety, going on vacation can give you that perspective and insight as to the value of letting go and taking a step back. And so this can give you some ways that you can maybe bring some of that ease, some of that rest into your day to day. And I'll talk about specific ways that you can try and play around with that in a little bit. Before we get into that, I do want to talk about that feeling. So I mentioned this in the intro, that feeling of anxiety and dread that you might feel upon returning from vacation. So maybe, you know, some people call it the Sunday scaries because this can be something that people experience on a weekly basis, like that Sunday night before the work week starts. 
of the anxiety of the anticipation or the dread of, okay, now I'm going back into a work week. And this can certainly apply when you're returning to vacation, sometimes even more so, because there can be that anxiety of, okay, did I miss something important while I was gone? Is it going to be a lot that I have to catch up on? Am I going to be thrust back into the stress of of my day to day? So a lot of these things can contribute to and increase that anticipation and that worry about what's coming up following vacation. So if you find yourself in this place where you're worried about returning back to work or you feel kind of like amped up and apprehensive or dreadful about returning to work, then there are things that you can do to manage and decrease that. And one thing is to recognize that you were in this place where you were enjoying yourself, you were most likely able to do whatever you wanted, and now it's back into the routine and the responsibility. And inherently, that can bring up some stress and tension and frustration. And just acknowledging and recognizing that that's okay and that's normal. And recognizing the importance of having a balance. If you just did whatever you wanted to all the time, that would be excellent. However, you know, the reality is that we all have responsibilities in life. Just recognizing that it's okay to to feel that transition and going back into work because it is a change and it is kind of going back into that world of, okay, now I have to focus on caring for myself, potentially caring for others. And it's not that that is completely lifted upon vacation, but it's something that maybe is not front of mind as often. So one thing that can really help is what's called positive self-talk. And so this is just the way that you speak to yourself, but speaking to yourself in a positive way. So one way to cope with that is letting yourself know, okay, Once I go back into work, I still have control over the way that I think about things, over the way that I choose to do things. It's not that I'm completely out of control and going to be thrown into this stressful environment. Although work certainly can be stressful, you still have control over the way that you care for yourself, over the way that you think about things. And so recognizing that you're not completely helpless to just going back into the way things were before and Now that you have gained this perspective of how valuable maybe that time for recovery is and how important it is for you, that is something that you can take and experiment with throughout your day. And so if you're finding, you know, I think it can help to specifically reflect upon what exactly is bringing up this anxiety or these feelings of dread for you or this anticipation, what specifically is it? Is it, okay, I'm worried about having to respond to all these emails. I'm worried about having to face my boss. I'm worried about having to work with these difficult clients, whatever it might be. And once you can identify the specific thing that is bringing up the anxiety, then I think it can help to name it. And there's a saying that you name it in order to tame it when it comes to your emotions. You can name that thing and then ask yourself, okay, what would I say to a friend who was feeling this way? So how can you speak back to yourself and practice some of that positive self-talk in order to work through this specific thing that's bringing up anxiety? Because oftentimes there's this worry that I won't be able to control this or I won't be able to handle this. And the reality is that you can handle it. You've handled this before and you can transition back into work mode. And it doesn't mean that all hope is lost. Many times it's common to have this all or nothing thinking and to think that, okay, it's either I'm completely in vacation mode or I'm completely 100% in work mode without seeing that there is a middle ground and there is a gray area and it is possible to balance both work responsibility and balance rest, recovery, and joy. And that is something that you can utilize in order to remind yourself that this doesn't mean that I'm completely thrust back into not caring for myself. Even if you make one small change in order to bring more of that vacation feeling into your day, that is progress. And that is a step in the direction of caring for yourself and reducing the stress and anxiety that you feel in your day-to-day working life. So specifically, you know, I, I mentioned bringing that feeling of vacation into your work life, bringing it into your day, bringing it into your week. And that can start by looking at, okay, how do I feel when I'm on vacation and reflecting on, okay, I feel joyful. I feel relaxed. I feel feelings of awe by, you know, if you're, this was something I experienced looking at the beauty of the nature around me, looking at the the evergreen trees, how huge those trees were in Oregon and looking at the mountainscapes and looking at the changing leaves that are occurring now kind of on the cusp of fall and 
looking at, I went on this beautiful hike where there were tons of waterfalls. So reflecting on, okay, what were the feelings you had? Maybe it was feelings of, you know, the joy of learning. And I went to a museum and learned a lot about the local history. Maybe it is just that feeling of being able to let go. And once you've identified those feelings, then think of, okay, what are things that give me those feelings that I can access in my daily life, in my local community or around me? So for example, one thing for me could be maybe taking time when I have a later morning or maybe get out of work earlier or even on a lunch break to go to a local park and experience the nature there and and go for a walk or take a break there or go for a run there. It could also be if you find joy from just resting and letting go, okay, is it possible to completely disconnect from work and your email at a certain time or over the weekend and just allow yourself to be present and allow yourself to do things that bring you joy. So for one coaching client of mine, this looked like rather than she would just allow herself to watch TV on the weekends, this looked like, okay, can you sprinkle that in during your week to give yourself some of that joy? So maybe it is watching one TV show once a night or a few times a week to give yourself that experience of just allowing yourself to relax and enjoy things. It's going to look different for everybody. It could look like just taking these little breaks, maybe going to your favorite coffee shop. If you're watching the video, I I went to a coffee shop today, especially since I work from home as a way to get out. But doing things that will bring you those same feelings that you get when you're in vacation mode, but just in a different way. How can you sprinkle these experiences into your life? And it doesn't need to be spending money on food or beverages if that's not something that you value or that's not something that you're able to do. It can look like even small steps towards getting that feeling of either disconnecting or caring for yourself. So these are just a few ideas, but I would love to hear any ideas that you have in the comments if you are watching on YouTube or if you are listening on Spotify. On YouTube, you can just leave me a comment below. And on Spotify, there is a Q&A section where you can leave me a comment and let me know what things are you currently doing or can you do in order to bring that sense or that feeling of vacation mode into your day, into your work day or into your week and share that with us so that other people can get ideas and know ways that they can do that as well. So the transition from vacation mode into work mode does not have to be impossible. It does not have to feel overwhelming. And there are small things that you can do to make that transition easier for you to manage. If you found this episode helpful, then you will love my free training on how to create work-life balance and feel calmer from within as a high achieving professional without compromising your success. In this training, I will share tips on how to increase work-life balance, how to feel calmer from within without overthinking and feeling anxious about everything and how to feel more confident in yourself. You can learn more and sign up for this free training by going to calmlycoping.com slash workshop. And while you wait for next week's episode, I have other episodes about calming your mind, creating work-life balance and feeling more confident from within. So be sure to check out these episodes here. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And until next time, be calm.